Ski racing is a popular winter sport that involves athletes skiing down a race course as fast as possible while navigating through gates that are set up along the course. The sport is divided into four disciplines. Today we will be focusing on giant slalom. In this explanation, we will dive into the physics behind skiing, the forces involved, the role of friction, the importance of aerodynamics, as well as many other aspects. One of the most important concepts applied in ski racing is the idea of centripetal force. Centripetal force is the force that keeps an object moving in a circular path and is directed towards the center of the circle. In ski racing, when a skier is making a turn, this centripetal force is what keeps them moving in a circular path around the gate. The amount of centripetal force required to make a turn is determined by the speed of the skier and the tightness of the turn. When a skier enters a turn, they lean their body towards the center of the turn, which allows them to generate a force perpendicular to the slope, resulting in the centripetal force needed to complete the turn. The skier's momentum and the force generated by their ski edges against the snow help balance the centripetal force. Centripetal force is truly what determines a ski race. The use of centripetal force can propel a skier down the hill, making them faster and making them inch out their opponents by microseconds. I have some graphs on the screen that explain the relation between centripetal force and other aspects of skiing, such as uh, angle of the skis themselves uh, compared to the snow and the distance you are from the next gate coming up as you go through your turn. Another fundamental concept in ski racing is that of friction. There are two types of friction that come into play, static friction and kinetic friction. Static friction is the force that resists the motion of an object at rest, while kinetic friction resists the motion of an object in motion. In ski racing, static friction comes to play when coming out of the start gate, where skier must push off the snow to start moving. The force they generate against the snow creates a force that is equal and opposite to the static frictional force which propels them forward. This is why start is very important in skiing, because it gives you the motion that you require to go down the rest of the course. In contrast, kinetic friction comes into play when the skier is already in motion. The amount of kinetic friction between the ski and the snow depends on several factors, including the temperature and texture of the snow, the wax on the ski, and the pressure exerted by the skier. Skiers aim to maximize the frictional force between their skis and the snow to generate the centripetal force required to turn efficiently. So in some cases, skiers can actually use friction to their advantage, but most of the time we try to have our skis as flat as possible uh, especially in speed events, in order to minimize the amount of friction there is so that we can glide efficiently and make more speed, or carry our speed, rather. And this can be done through the use of many tuning techniques, uh, like using certain waxes that are more appropriate for snow temperatures that day. Since we're focusing on GS skiing, we don't have to go over too much about ski design. But what you do want in a ski is something stiff where you can flex into it with the front of your boot, put pressure into the ski, and have the ski bend and bounce back off the snow to give you the maximized centripetal force and really a spring uh, output. Your ski acts as a spring between you and the ground that is fueled by the centripetal force that you are creating. And that helps make more speed to get to the end of the course faster. Aerodynamics is another crucial factor in ski racing, less so in GS, but at the end of GS races you will see people get into their tuck when it becomes flattened, and this is to reduce the air resistance that you're having. Especially in speed skiing, when you're reaching speeds of up to 80 miles an hour or more, the air resistance acting on a skier's body is very impactful. It can slow a skier down by a lot. So each little adjustment that you can make while you're in your tuck can help really eliminate a lot of that time. Other factors also come into play such as gravity, kinetic energy, and potential energy. Gravity is what pulls the skier downhill with the angle of the slope affecting the skier's speed. The steeper the slope, the faster the skier will go due to increase in potential energy, which is converted to kinetic energy as the skier accelerates down the slope. 
So in all, skiing is made up of very fundamental principles of physics applied in a certain way that combines them in really quite a beautiful way. The g-forces felt by the skier make it an uh, exhilarating race sport, as well as the amount of freedom you have on the hill once you truly master your skis and your skiing ability. Skiing is a fantastic sport. I love the opportunity to be in the mountains at any chance I can get. I recommend the same for others. Um, if you ever have the chance to ski, I recommend it highly, and have a good day.